is Yuval Ron. I'm glad to have you with us for this celebration of a new album called Sacred Spiral. And this new album uh, was envisioned by my colleague, Dr. Richard Gold, who is with us. And we are also fortunate to have with us the soloist, uh, the incredible singer and a friend named Uyanga Bold, who is with us. And she sang all the melodies that I composed for this album. And really, this, this album is really featuring her soul, her nuances of voice. I believe her ancestry even is coming through. And we're going to be talking with Uyanga about this uh, coming very soon. We also have with us, and this is a rare delight, to have the designer, the artist who created the amazing album cover and she's with us too to celebrate and to tell us how she created that cover image uh, with us is Yael Pardes I'm glad that you are with us and let's begin with one minute album trailer that introduces the album here is the album trailer <laughs> Sacred Spiral is a new album featuring one of my favorite singers in the whole entire world. Her name is Uyanga Bold. And she brought incredible sense of spirituality and beautiful nuanced performances to each one of my melodies and elevated it to a whole new rock. So this is the one minute, little, little taste of the album. There are only two musical excerpts from the, the whole album in this one minute little excerpt. And so I would like to play for you excerpts from all the seven tracks of the album. So you get a sense of this music before we celebrate it and in the conversation with my colleagues. And so... I will plug these headphones so I can speak over the music and give you a little commentary. And I will share a screen. Here is the first track called e Ethereal Voyage. What you hear is the voice of Uyanga together with glass harmonica performed by Brian Engel, a master glass harmonica player. Incredible textures of the glass harmonica and the voice of Uyanga. It's amazing what Uyanga is doing with her voice. Part of it is breathing, singing through breath. Some of the things sound like sound effects. Some of, some of what she's doing sounds like the wind. It's hard to know where, where is the voice and where is the wind and where, what came from what instrument. It's all weaved together in this mysterious ethereal texture.
So this is the flavor of the opening track. And then we have the second track where it's a track called Voice of Freedom. This track features Andrew Carney, the great Andrew Carney on tr jazz trumpet. He actually plays an instrument called flugelhorn, which is a low trumpet. And uh, listen to Yanga singing a completely different vocal technique. This sound that she brings in is much more uh, relates to R&B, to rhythm and soul, to uh, rhythm and blues, it's soul. Uh, it's very earthy, very bluesy. And later in the track, it becomes a cry. So it's a very, very uh, bluesy, jazzy track, and it's all about expression. It's about freeing your voice. And from there, we go to the third track, which is called Mind Vision, Invocation, featuring James Hood on the pan drum. It's kind of like a steel drum that you hear right now, but played with the hands. Now, Yanga is singing in a completely different style. It's, it's much more African related. It's uh, shamanic. And it's about invoking mind vision, imagination, intuition. And further in the track, we're invoking joy and ecstatic joy. So later in the track, get into these grooves and rhythms and Uyanga sings uh, four or five different vocal parts there while James Hood is playing four or five different tracks of, of the drum, the hang drum and it's a great celebration And then the fourth track introduces a very different texture and a different world and it's called Mysteries of the Heart. This track, track number four, Mysteries of the Heart, features the great musician Shai Bensu from Israel, who spent most of his career in India. And he's a master of the Bansuri wooden flute and classical Indian music. He's also a vocalist. And we hear him on this track singing along with Uyanga. And the nature of this track is comes it's a very longing, pining, loving track 
that explores all the different phenomena of love, including the pain, including the separation, including the journey towards unity, the longing. And it has a Sufi influences, it has classical Indian influences. And for some of the reviewers, this is the heart of the record. This is the heart of the album, track number four. It's right in the middle of the seven tracks. Let me bring, this is Shai, Shai Bensur singing. Younger is answering. And from that track. We go to track number five, which is called Water of Forgiveness. And we stay with the inspiration of India. As we introduce a great master musician on sitar. The master sitar player on this track is Pandit Nayan Ghosh from Mumbai, India. He's one of the greatest masters of sitar living today in the world. This track is kind of washing water that are of forgiveness, that are washing all the pain and the, the longing that we experienced in the previous track of Mysteries of the Heart. There's more of a flow and less struggle in this track. Listen to Yanga singing the theme. And from Water of Forgiveness, we go to the sixth and one before the last track. And this track features the great cellist Dennis Karmazan on cello. He is the principal cellist of the Hollywood Ball Orchestra and one of the greatest cellists in Hollywood who played on all the John Williams movies of Schindler List and Star Wars and. Um, <clears throat> Every, every movie that you can think of, he's on it. Uh, his name is Dennis Karmazan. And he plays the cello here. And Uyanga sing along this theme that I wrote. It's kind of a duet for voice and cello. It's a very classical, Western classical style. And it's called Darkness into Light.
later in the track, we go to the higher range. Now, Yanga joins the cello in the upper range. And so this very somber but hopeful track leads us to the last track and this track features master gong player Kenneth Jove and the didgeridoo player Andy Andy W I think his last name escaped me but I always call him Andy Andy Didge he plays didgeridoo here now this track will be very hard for you to hear through computer speakers or cell phone speakers because it has enormous amount of low frequencies that comes from the gongs. And so I would recommend hearing it on a good stereo system or very good headphones. Uyanga sings a very shamanic style of voice chanting here and the track is called Deep Earth Chant. This is the human voice. Can you believe it? This is a singer named Uyanga Bold who is vocalizing these melodies. This whole album had only one singer, only one human being that sang on this album. And I'm, I'm just amazed myself Although I worked on this album for more than more than two years. I worked on this album for three years. The last three years. We started it before COVID. Three years in the making. And I'm just listening to those excerpts of the so seven tracks. And I'm just amazed. I'm just amazed that there's one human being that sang these all this material, all these melodies, all these sounds, all these emotions, it's just an incredible showcase. So in due time, we will get to interview Uyanga Bold, who is with us. But before that, I just wanted to invite the great person who made this whole possible, because Uyanga and I would never have done this album if Dr. Richard Gold didn't envision it. He envisioned it. He came to me and said, why don't you... No, he said it like this. He said, do you think, do you, think uh, you can have Uyanga uh, sing over all this chakra music that you composed? And, and I thought, 
Uh, that's interesting. Uh, at that point, I already worked with Uyanga on several projects, on some film scores that I composed, and we've done some concerts together with my ensemble. Um, so I, I worked with her, but this was an interesting idea to do a whole album with Uyanga with different colors, addressing different energies. And Dr. Richard Gold came with this idea and supported it. And so I want to invite Dr. Gold to tell us a little bit about where this vision came and what do you think this music could be used for? How could people benefit from this music? So please, uh, Dr. Gold, unmute, unmute yourself. And Hi. Thank you so much, Yuval. That was an amazing presentation. From the time Yuval and I came together in a creative partnership uh, with Meta Mindfulness Music, our, our mission was to use modern neuroscience and ancient wisdom traditions to create uh, sounds that facilitated healing and, and meditation. Um, also then, uh, you, Yuval told me maybe about five or six years ago that he uh, had met an amazing singer who we've all gotten to meet here now. And uh, I immediately uh, Googled Uyanga and I was just stunned uh, by the range of what she does, her, her, her presence, her aura, her, this, the, the depth of her spirit. Now, in, in these ancient wisdom traditions, there's no mind-body split that we have in Western culture. And if for myself, just listening to this, and I think, Yael, I could tell you going through the same thing. I went through a whole range of emotions, uh, even though I've heard all these tracks many, many times. And so uh, after you've all introduced me to uh, Uyanga, um, we then asked her to join us in our project we uh, did on Buddhist uh, wisdom tradition called the Four Divine States of Mind. And her track on that is just astounding. I listen to it almost every day uh, here a number of years later. The track called Equanimity. If people Equanimity. Want to yeah, Equanimity. Subsequently, um, Yuval and I were invited to present to an international um, acupuncture Chinese medicine conference on sound healing. And I asked the uh, president of the organization, could we please bring Uyanga to uh, to nourish our acupuncture Chinese medicine community, and he did. And to perform on the stage, same stage with Uyanga was just a blessing of a lifetime. And I could see how she mesmerized the crowd. Um, it was just rem remarkable. And like with our album here, her voice is an instrument where we never wanted her to sing words. We didn't want to engage the narrative mind to try to understand the poetry of what she was saying. We wanted it to be a immediate, visceral, emotional, emotional experience. And then, quite frankly, the idea to do this whole album was like a lightning bolt. There was no rational objective no business plan, no, you know, just how we could invoke a whole gamut of emotions um, and uh, styles and the, the diversity of instruments. And this became an international project that we recorded in, in Mumbai, India. We didn't have to travel there. Luckily, electronic uh, allows us, uh, the internet allows us to get, we work with engineers in these other countries. We worked in uh, uh, Rajasthan in India and in Mumbai and Tel Aviv in Israel um, and then in Atlanta also here in the States. And this whole project just kept evolving to something way beyond me and way beyond my dream even. And uh, the result of it um, is just, I feel it's a blessing to the world. And having you, Uyanga uh, work with us um, at this stage of career was just remarkable. I'm eternally grateful to her. My recommendation about how to listen to this, it's, you know, it works as a whole album, absolutely. But I think after uh, listeners will listen to it little by little, they'll recognize certain pieces evoke them in such different ways that they'll, they'll begin to use it almost like a music medicine. That if they feel like they're, they're constricted in their heart, they're gonna play Mysteries of the Heart. If they feel like there's something they need to say, they'll do the the vocal one the um uh, uh voice of freedom um and uh so really I, I recommend it as a whole listening experience but also as a music medicine um and a, a way of connecting to deep spirituality deep earth chant 
you're going to go to the garden after working on that. You're going to, want to get your hands hands in the dirt and pick you know pick pick beets out of your garden or something like that. Um, I need to praise Yuval because um, none of this can happen without his creativity and his vision and his his connection to musicians. And then when Yuval brought Yael in to do the album cover, oh my gosh, it just it was like a icing on the cake, the star on the top of the tree. It just was. It brought this whole thing to another another level. So thank you all for joining us today, and thank you for you've all for everything. And Yuyanga and Yael, really. Thank you, Rick. That that's wonderful. It's a, what what a great way to celebrate this effort that we are. You know what a team. Uh, so thank you. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Uyanga and to give her the floor. And and uh, Uyanga, we are all grateful for all the efforts that you made. I, I wanted to say to uh, the audience um, that we uh, worked on it for more than two years. And when we started it, it was before COVID. And so the first track, just the first track, came to uh, you came to my studio and we recorded it in my studio but then COVID hit and the rest of the album was recorded in your studio remotely and I know it was challenging I know it was rich uh, but segmented because we've done seven tracks over two and a half years so it was very segmented and I'm wondering what was the experience for you? What is most memorable for you? What is the track that touched your heart the most? What is the track that was the most challenging for you to plug in or to find? How, how was the experience for you? And I, I'd like to just ask our uh, production manager to spotlight you when you come on, because I see Dr. Gold on Spotlighted and uh, while I'm talking, so I'm not sure if the audience is seeing uh, the speaker or not, but let's let's invite Uyanga, please unmute yourself and um, you're welcome. Mm. Thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thank you for inviting me to um, join uh, um, this uh, beautiful endeavor of exploring the uh, chakras through through music and especially through living instruments right it, this is not uh, just um, like um, in the box uh, you play with a midi keyboard sounds that are in the computer these are real living human beings for example the cello uh, it's a lifetime of study right and bringing all of that into um uh, this album, I believe, really enriches the experience of um, journeying through the chakras, right? And um, so I really enjoyed uh, embarking on this journey with uh, my cohorts here, incredible um, uh, creative forces. And um, um, each one of these um, pieces is... Um, uh, is a vibratory space of its own. So I enjoyed being um, and tuning myself into um, uh, these spaces within myself as within and without. And um, uh, I just love this idea of having one person sing the whole um, album because this is... Um, the human experience. We have all these capabilities and capacities within us, right? And um, I love that the album begins with ethereal voyage and ends with deep earth chant because um, it's um, really encompassing the human journey right, where we come from and where we return, right? That this, this soul and the earth and the body and in between we have this human experience, uh, uh, how we speak, how we love, how we envision, how we forgive, um, how we move from, from um, darkness into light, from ignorance to um, uh, understanding, right? And then it's really... Um, these archetypal journeys that we embarked upon it. And so um, um, to say which one um, 
uh, speaks the most up. Uh, perhaps as a singer, I enjoyed Voice of Freedom, uh, you know, and because as a um, as an artist and as a singer, I strive for freedom, you know, in in my expression, and, and that's a thread of of, of um, that I like to uh, uh, pull um, through discipline, through devotion, dedication, um, and um, the. One that what might have been most challenging was um, deep earth chat, because there's um, uh, a lot of frequencies in the gong, um, and it's a big field of frequencies. And um, I was wondering which direction to go, you know, which scale, which uh, um, um, a mode to sort of um, inhabit, and. Um, and the way through that was to co connect with the didgeridoo as the tonic, more or less, and to um, really go into a shamanic trance state myself, right? And to uh, not think about music theory so much and really embody a deep earth and allow, as you've all said, my ancestors and uh, the earth to sing through, right? Beyond mind. Uh, Thank you. This this is wonderful to hear. Uh, I have a question for you that I think many people in the audience may have is when they hear and meet a singer like yourself, they are wondering immediately from track to track, they're wondering where where did she study this? Where did she learn this? How did she learn this style and that style and this style? So people are wondering, it's like, which school did she go to? Uh, which which uh, uh, teacher she had, you know, I want to go and study uh, like this. And I heard uh, one of one of my friends that heard uh, the album said uh, that they want to come and study with you. So I, I have I have one student that is on the way to call you because she just wants to learn voice with you. But could you just speak a little bit about your uh, path as a singer? Who who was the people? or the cultures that influence your singing the most? What, what is the education that your voice went through? Um, I'm <laughs> just uh, uh, touching and kissing the robes of my teachers, right? The hem of the robes of my teachers, so to speak. And um, um, I think it's a, it's a journey of translating the in, invisible sounds the the, the the sacred sound through voice and that call has led me to different teachers to different um, places in the world and I was fortunate enough to um, um, go for example uh, live for a month with a um, with a uh, native people in the Amazon rainforest to study their chants as a ethnomusicological kind of a study. And um, I also, um, perhaps you heard, st um, studied um, Western classical singing. Um, this wonderful teacher from Juilliard, um, uh, Rona Klinghofer, and I've also studied um, uh, and then continue um, Hindustani uh, uh, classical uh, music with my teacher they and um, um, also I've studied um, um, just classical and traditional music from my country from um, uh, I've studied Balkan music a lot um, uh, and um, uh, did, you, did you study Mongolian music in Mongolia where you, where that you, where you uh, that came more from uh, just growing up with the music in my ears, right? Uh, hearing it, uh, it, it just comes completely naturally beyond beyond thought. And of course, it's supplemented with with techniques and you know, pilgrimage is going to Mongolia and receiving some some um, lessons from teachers there, but um, they don't teach uh, by Zoom. <laughs> so, but uh, so. Um, and for me, it's really finding the common 
language and all these um, different traditions. And if, if I listen deep enough, I find the commonalities between Japanese traditional singing to Mongolian singing to music from Ghana to music from um, Morocco, right? The chants and the Berber -ber music to um, the, 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 the blues to... Um, to Kawali music to you know the, and, and I happen to study Kawali and just try to follow the curiosity follow the call um, and uh, um, I hope to to just be able to touch as much of music as I can in this lifetime you know yeah. Tell me, uh, how how do you, what would you credit the education that you had in Berkeley College of Music in Boston how how the studies there contribute to your voice I see, I see. Yes, um, uh, Berkeley is a melting pot, an international melting pot. So I had the opportunity to um, uh, sort of uh, rub shoulders with people from all over the world and from different musical traditions. And it, it, it expanded my um, uh, horizons and possibilities to what's out there musically, culturally. Um, um, and of course, the, the, the facilities, the faculty, and just the atmosphere was uh, uh, elevated. Um, uh, um, my uh, uh, consciousness to, with regards to music. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would like to invite the viewers to see an interview that we did with you um, two years ago. And this video, it's a short interview and I asked you one question, I believe. I asked you, what does your voice mean to you? And you spoke about that when we did an interview for the release of Four Divine States album, where you sang a beautiful track called Equanimity, which uh, many people are, are enjoying around the world. Equanimity. Uh, you may look it up. Equanimity uh, by Yuval Ran featuring Uyanga Bold. So we are ready whenever Zach is ready to play the interview with Uyanga about what her voice means. Here we go. My voice is important to me personally because it is the only thing that makes sense to me. It's a knowing for me that's deeper than um, anything in my life. It's uh, connecting to a part of me that's ancient, timeless, beyond my life. It's connecting to my ancestors' ancestors. Um, in all the lives that I've ever led, uh, connected to the part of me that uh, has, is reincarnating over and over. And also, it's um, just getting out of the way of the divine flowing through me. So, Osho said something to the effect of when the singer disappears and the song remains, then it's meditation, then it's a taste of existence. So if I can make space within me for the divine to resonate, to uh, just transmit and channel it uh, without <laughs> anything getting in the way, then uh, that is truly uh, the most blissful uh, that I can one can be in this life, I think, provides me with um, bliss and truth and beauty and all the good things in life. And so uh, this was the interview that we did uh, two years ago. And uh, it's so interesting to hear Uyanga speaks about her voice and her observations of uh, the musical tracks. I appreciate Uyanga very much that you are here with us. Thank you for your contributions. I would like to introduce you now to Yael Pardes. And Yael is an old friend of mine, and we both started our career in theater uh, in Israel. And I started my career when I was 19. Uh, I started composing music for theater shows in in uh, Tel Aviv, and I remember the name Yael Pardes. People were talking about Yael Pardes as you know one of the talented um, 
set designers for theater, but after three years in my theater career, where I composed music for theater in Israel, I left Israel and I went to Boston to Berkeley College of Music to study, same school where Uyanga studied. And I've been working in the, in the States and living here since uh, 1985. And so I never gone back to the theater scene. But then in Los Angeles, I meet Yael Pardes and she's doing set design for, you know, Hollywood movies and theater and LA and all over the world. And, and she works with Disney and she works with all kinds of producers. And, and we became friends, but we never got to work together. But three years ago, about three years ago, four years ago, Yael recommended a director to call me to write music for a play that she designed uh, called Dig. And we finally got to be together in one production. We did the music, I did the music, Yael did the set for this play called Dig and um, with Stacy, Stacy um, Chaikin. Chaikin, who wrote and uh, acted it. It's a very interesting play called Dig. And then I felt, you know, I felt more of a taste and, and I, I just, you know, I'm waiting for a project that I could send Yael. <laughs> and, but I never thought, I always think about Yael, you know, to, to get her to work on a, on a movie or, or a theater play with me. Um, and I never thought about Yael in connection with a cover design, although she's an artist, she's a painter, she's, 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 she's a visual artist. So one day, not too long ago, several months ago, Yael was over at my house and we were sitting in the patio having dinner with friends and my family. And we start talking about the album that I'm working on with Uyanga and that I'm, I'm thinking about ideas for the cover. And, and Yael suddenly said, um, uh, she, she had an idea about a shell or something. And, and she said, oh, I, could, I could do it. And I looked at her and I said, really? You, you're going to be willing to do that? And I felt like, you know, this is, this is huge. You know, if we can get Yael to contribute and Yael did contribute and uh, I, I, I tell you I worked on I, I can show you right now on, on my wall in my studio how many cover designs there are these, these are not all the albums that I've I've done this is just selection and you see all the all the covers and I'm always involved with working with the designers on the cover because I love visual but I'm not a visual artist but I love working on visual uh, um, designs with artists and this design that Yael created is just breathtaking it's it's just uh, you know I just want to print it as posters actually I just ordered two po full size posters 36 by 36 I'm going to frame and um, it's just so beautiful so Yael thank you very much for <laughs> Contributing and tell us, please, about your process. How do you work on a cover? How did you work on this cover? What was the process? Please. Thank you. It was such an honor for me to be part of it because the music was absolutely divine. I was transported and I think that I didn't do the album. The music did the album. <laughs> Seriously, it happened to me when when I designed several things. I do a lot of plays. I do theme parks, and it many times I just put music on and or I put I read the story and I let the play guide me. And I work from the kishke, you know, the the guts. I am not thinking too much. I just let it happen, and so it was with this album. We got to talk about the, the various elements, what needed to be there. I'm going to share my screen and share the, the basic building blocks of this album, what we thought was going to be there. We knew that we wanted some kind of celestial constellation, whichever it was going to be. We were going to connect the music to the frequency of the celestial world. And somehow, I don't remember if it was Yuval or me, we 
connected the same kind of pattern to the um, shells, to those ancient, ancient shells that I forgot the name of them, but maybe you, Val, you can refresh my memory. Ammonite, I think it's called Ammonite. Mm -hmm. They are um, made of stone and the, it, they have the same pattern as the the stars as the galaxies and i said that's really interesting what about that golden um rule that that particular line that uh, the fibonacci uh, golden rule can can it work for that so i started to make all kinds of compositions and i'm going to show you first of all the final one so you know where we're heading this is the final one that I think you're all familiar with. And the journey toward getting there was really quite lovely because at the beginning, I said, okay, let's put them together. Let's see what we're getting there. How do they talk to each other, these two elements? This is so ethereal and large and in the sky. And this is so earthy and materialistic and ancient as well how do they correspond with each other and i started to put them together and started to do all kinds of compositions so you can see one is more transparent one is more simplified just the line and i came back to yuval with these uh, beginnings and he said you know i think we should have her portrait and so I said, okay, let's look at her various images. I, he shared several images online with me um, so that we could see where her, what, what can her face tell us? So Uganda, I searched you online. <laughs> I found all kinds of things that were, would be helpful. And I began to put them together in various combinations including this one this one was actually the least one that i thought was going to work but turned out that it was the one that worked the best but i'll show you the various trials this is a different singer but i wanted to see what that kind of portrait could do where we would, we would place it this was another trial not uganda this is uganda from the hand but placed differently and none of them seemed to really work but it was a good journey toward the exploration until one day and i have to say that's when i listened to the music because all these other ones i did without the music and when i listened to the music it was just blink <laughs> it just happened i swear and it happened to me several times in my career where I just let go and I let something flow, whether it's music or a play or words or a poem, and it, it does the work. And that was it. And all we needed to do was finesse a few elements, where to write the text, is this uh, font the right font? How do we light the hand better? There was very little else to do. It was just the right combination and this is the final album so amazing amazing you know it's so beautiful and it's so so much uh expressed the album because uyanga is like uh with her hand gener exactly. generating the light the golden light that becomes the spiral and and she's like the the wizard that is 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 but she's not completely dominating she's not in the center he's flowing with sure. all these energies combining yeah. past ancient past present <clears throat> yes i was so, blown away myself by finding it all these elements together in perfect balance and they're all merging into you see the body of uyanga the, her torso is actually the galaxy the the the, okay. milky, the milky way galaxy the galaxy we live in becoming Uyanga, and Uyanga is becoming the light, the light becoming the shells. It's all one flow, uh, and it's just uh, incredible. And, and in a way, the album is like that. It's all one flow with all those elements. It's so rich um, and uh, amazing. amazing. Thank, you. Thank you for showing us your 
process. It was so interesting to see your uh, the different images, the, the 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 images that didn't make it to the final. <laughs> it makes it so interesting, isn't it? There were many more, but it's <laughs> annoying. I, 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 I always do a lot of research before any project, and the images sometimes yes. tell me what I'm supposed to do. Wonderful. So, <clears throat> my friends, um, this is concluding our presentation, but we have a few minutes left to uh, entertain any questions. And I think th these are this is an incredible opportunity for anybody who is watching now to participate in this and ask a question through writing a comment on the YouTube live stream. Uh, just write a comment and Zach, our production manager, will pick it up and ask us the question on your behalf. You can ask Uyanga, Yael, Dr. Gold, myself, any question about any of the aspects of this work. Um, I wish I was an audience member uh, in this kind of an event. I, I would like to ask the uh, the composer a couple of questions. I would have asked, um, how do you produce an album like that? How do you find these musicians? I would ask, how do you compose music in different modes in Indian ragas for the Indian influence ragas? How do you compose a shamanic melody for Deep Earth? There's so many questions that come to my mind. Um, Zach, do you see any questions from the audience? Okay, so there's a question from Jake, uh, but how would one use this music? And maybe we'll go around. Um, maybe uh, Yael, do you want to go for it? How would you use this album? Or oh, unmute yourself, please. <clears throat> okay. It's. I really chime in with what Richard said that it has such a deep capacity to heal, calm the mind and, and be a conduit of creativity. Mm -hmm. So anytime, anywhere, not when you drive, but even now when I listened again to those little previews that Yuval played, I was, I felt like I was massaged by golden rays of light. And I usually don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's it's a very powerful energy music. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uyanga, would you like to recommend how, how and when people could benefit from this music best? Uh, um, Dr. Gold said it beautifully that it can be used as a music medicine and for me this is a a, a timeless uh, music medicine because of um, the natural instruments that um, comprise this music which means that the sounds don't age sounds in the from the computer tend to age whereas um, the, the 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 voice, the bansuri flute, the sitar, um, the cello—they don't age; they're timeless. So we can listen to this a whole lifetime, right? And it can really become uh, a, a place where we can rest our busy minds in this modern society. So much information coming in. Um, sometimes, perhaps, it would be useful to have a place to tune into the inner silence, um, especially during the day, you know, and if we put it just in headphones and take a moment to breathe, to clean our energy, and it's the oldest form of healing really through sound, right? And um, we get, we put in so much uh, thought and um, um, uh, the, uh, of, of, uh, of, um, bringing sacredness and divinity and, 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 and healing and beautiful frequencies that I think any person who listens to it will get to a state of, okay, okay, this is changing my, my, um, uh, perspective, um, 
you know, Einstein said you can't um, fix the problem with the same consciousness that created it. So it's a wonderful way to naturally and easily change and alter our state of consciousness. And um, and uh, as Dr. Gold said, tune into okay today I might look into my voice and 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 this is for my uh, want to connect to a higher um, source uh, to 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 uh, help see a higher perspective for my affairs for example right mm -hmm. thank you yeah I I would say um, the whole album listening to the whole album is like a journey and it's a it's a medicine for the whole body and the mind and it's a big undertaking it's 70 minutes of really tuning attuning the whole body and the whole mind and then within those seven tracks each track can work on different qualities and attributes and and different purposes so you have to spend time with each one of the tracks and and figure out from the hints in the title and how you feel when to use each of the tracks for particular uh, uh, targets of uh, energetic uh, conditioning. So um, experiment with that. You know, try it in different ways. Try it when you do yoga. Try it when you, before you go to sleep. Try to um, some to play in the back background when you do creative work. See how it works for you. Thank you, Zach. Uh, do we have any other questions? We have maybe time for one more last question, if there is any. Yes, uh, Joyce was asking for the music, how much free reign is given to Bianca to choose which notes to sing, and how much is decided by Yuval? Did Dr. Gold have any input regarding the healing elements in the vocals? Okay, so the question was from Joyce, and she asked, how uh, how much is indicated in the, by the composer? How much of the music was notated by the composers? How much input there is uh, for Yanga, and how much input there is for Dr. Gold in the in regards to the musical notes? Um, and I'll answer that, um, Joyce. Uh, it's an interesting question. It's a complex process, but just to simplify it, uh, the short answer is. Uh, Dr. Gold is in the beginning and the end of the process, of the creative process. He he came up with the idea and told me the idea, and then it was up to me to create it, and then uh, to record it with Uyanga. And then whenever I would finish a track with Uyanga, I would send it to Dr. Gold, and he would kind of check it on himself and give me feedback and see, you know, how does it work for him. And sometimes, um, uh, for example, in deep deep chant, the deep chant, uh, deep earth chant. I um, I mixed Uyanga's voice very, very, very far in the background. And I wanted it to be a very textural thing with the gong because the gong, the gongs are very challenging and they are like a blanket of frequencies. It's just, you know, it's a, it's not clear notes. It's a cloud of very low notes. There's some high notes in the cloud. And, and the gongs are this blanket of sound. And her voice was sticking out of the gongs. And I found a way to make her voice really far, far away, coming from far away. And it kind of blended together with the gongs. But it was, it was really just a texture. You hardly heard it. And I sent it to Dr. Gold. And Dr. Gold listened to it. And he said, you know, I love what you created but i feel we need to hear Yanga a little bit more I, I hardly can hear her and i told him you know that's that's the that's the intentional that we barely hear her on on that one track she's like she's like an effect around around the gongs and and he said you know try give, give it a try do, do some experiment and see maybe there's a compromise place where you could bring the voice a little higher and see and i said okay let's let's experiment with that so i i brought uyanga's back to a level that i felt comfortable with and we listened to it again dr gold listened to it and we found that that was the perfect one you know because we could hear uyanga chanting and it when we can hear the gongs 
And that was, you know, uh, Dr. Gold's contribution that really affected the music at that point. So sometimes there's things like that. Um, and then the way I worked with Uyanga was I wrote in notes, in musical notes, each musical theme for each of the tracks. So she had the music. And then I would ask her to record it. And in some cases, in few of the cases, I asked her to improvise uh, a solo, an improvised solo in the middle, sometimes, not every time. Uh, there was some tracks where I told her, listen to the rhythms and create your own rhythms. On but I just want rhythms. I don't want any melody, just vocal rhythms with the hung drum on the track called um, Mind Vision Invocations. So, so that was uh, a, a place where it was not notated and Uyanga created it by listening to the rhythms that were on the track. And, um, and the same thing with the, uh, all the other musicians on the album, uh, the Bansuri flute, um, the cello, uh, the glass harmonica even. Every note that they played is written. I wrote all the notes and sent it to them. But then their great artistry is coloring those notes, making those notes sound good and have feeling and have emotions. And that's the big, big, big part of the performance and the contribution of the performers into this um, place. There's one exception, and that is the gong master. The gong master, Ken Jove, he's the only one who I didn't write a note. I, I brought him to my studio, and I was with him, and I told him, just give me a, a gong bath. And I told him that I need the note C, because the key of the track was C. So he used mostly his C gong, a little bit of his F gong. And I think there was one more gong that he used. So I gave him an environment, a, a tonal center. But then he played his gongs and he created that, that gong bath for us for the seventh tracks. So that's the one exception. So you have to know which instruments to give what. Um, you have to learn about the different instruments. Uh, one of the challenges was with the master sitar in India because I sent him the notes, all the notes, and I sent it to India, and then um, I found out that he doesn't read any Western notes. They have their own musical note system, Indian classical note system. And, and so uh, I was teaching him the music by, by heart. So I would sit at the piano in my studio, and I would play one, one, one melody, one little segment, and then he would play it on his sitar, then I would play the next segment, he would play it on sitar, and the, so I was teaching him the melody in the recording session, piece by piece, all by ear. I'm reading my notes. <laughs> he's not reading my notes, but he's just hearing, and whatever he heard, he played on his sitar, just perfectly. So all he needed is to hear it. Uh, so that was the one exception. So thank you for your question, Joyce. Thank you, everybody. If you'd like to send us emails with more, um, more uh, questions, we'll be happy to email you back. You can write to yuval at yuvalronmusic.com. There's more information about this album on Meta with double T, metamindfulnessmusic.com. And uh, if you'd like to contact uh, Uyanga Bold, uh, she's got a, her website, uyangabold.com, I believe. Is that correct, Uyanga? Uyangabold.com. And Yael Pardes, you probably can um, Google Yael Pardes and you'll find her site. And Dr. Richard Gold is with Meta Mindfulness Music, Meta with double T. And that's it, my friend. Thank you for uh, being here. We're going to leave you with uh, a video showing some of the reviews we got. Um, just last week, the first four reviews that were uh, came out, uh, beautiful, beautiful reviews. Uh, so enjoy it, enjoy the music, 
and be well. Blessings for all. We hope to see you in the next event. Be well. Thank you.